Go Inside the Crimson Tide with your hosts, Rodney Orr and Gary Harris, keeping you informed on everything Alabama. And now, Tider Insider TV. Sunday morning, there was a lot of anxiety for Alabama fans, but it turned out all right. I'll say so. Alabama, the number four team in the country, the last to make it into this year's version of the college football playoffs. And with that, we say good evening, everybody, and welcome into a festive edition of Tider Insider TV. Not only is it the Christmas season, but it's also playoff season. And for the fourth straight year, Alabama is in the only team to make it into the college football playoff the four years that it's been in existence. Welcome into the program. It's presented each and every week by Buffalo Rock alongside Rodney Orr from TiderInsider.com. I'm Gary Harris. Tonight, we're enjoying Diet Pepsi. Which is very festive, if I say so myself. I've been, I've been spewing it a little bit here lately. What's wrong with me? Boy, that tastes good and refreshing. Remember, pick up some great Pepsi products the next time you're at your local grocery store our convenience store, and uh, Pepsi's a Southern original from Buffalo Rock. Well, Rodney, as we were saying, Alabama fans can finally breathe a <sighs> sigh of relief after the Tide was the fourth team to be picked in the college football playoff ahead of Ohio State. After the Buckeyes beat undefeated Wisconsin in the Big Ten Championship, there was a huge debate across the country about which team should get in, Alabama or Ohio State. Which team deserved to be the last in the mix? Well, it was Alabama, and clearly, the Tide is not complaining that Alabama was the number four team, but Rodney, did they get it right? Did I they think it right? they definitely got it right. I mean, when you look at it, Gary, you can't explain away a 31-point loss that uh, Ohio State had at Iowa. They also were beat by double digits at home. Granted, a, a great Oklahoma team that's, that's going into this playoff uh, number two. Uh, so, again, I, I think they got it right. I mean, what other direction could you have gone? Alabama's number one most of the year. They lose a late game in the season to, to their last regular season game at Auburn, a team that may be as good as anybody in the country when they're playing at home. So, I, I don't know the other direction you could go. I mean, some people said Ohio State. Obviously, they've got some merit. They're a very talented team, very good team. Some people thought USC, Gary. Uh, but uh, I think they got it right with those four. And I like the order they're in. I think that's the perfect order. I do, too. And, and I'm encouraged because I didn't know if the committee – would, would give in to political correctness and pressure to put Ohio State in simply because they were the Big Ten champion, despite the fact, as you mentioned, they lost by 31 on the road and 18 at home. This tells me that the committee is really all about getting the four best teams into the playoff, two from the SEC. That's a big uh, point of contention by some other people around the country. But if the two of the four best teams, and the committee's opinion, are from the SEC, those two deserve to go. And, uh, again, I'm glad they took in the entire – body of work into account. Alabama lost one game, and people keep saying they didn't even win their division. Well, they tied for their division. They didn't get to go on the tiebreaker, but they had one loss, just like a lot of these other teams did in the championship game, except for Wisconsin, and of course, Ohio State took care of them. So with Alabama in, Rodney, uh, moving up to that number four spot, it sets it up again, part three. Now, Clemson and Alabama met the last two years in the championship game in Arizona and in Tampa. Now they'll meet in the semifinals at the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans, but uh, this has become quite a rivalry between these two squads. Alabama won a close one two years ago. Clemson won basically on the last play of the game last year. What do you think about uh, part three? Let's hear from the head coach uh, of the Crimson Tide, Nick Saban, and his thoughts on this matchup with Clemson. You know, the Sugar Bowl has always been something that's been special to Alabama. Uh, it's always been something that's special to the SEC uh, to play the number one team in the country. Uh, Coach Sweeney does a fantastic job with his program and his team, and we met these guys two years in a row in the finals, so uh, this is something that we're certainly looking forward to. That was our Coach Talk segment sponsored by Tuscaloosa Tourism and Sports. You heard Coach Saban, your thoughts now. Obviously, these two teams know each other very well, as well as you can know a team from another conference. They'll be playing for the third straight year. I mean, I think Clemson's loaded. I, I think up front on defense, they're dynamic. Kelly Bryant's not Deshaun Watson, but he's really good. They maybe don't have as many playmakers at wide receiver, but they got guys that can make plays. Uh, this is a football team that has the look of another team uh, that can win a national championship for the second straight year. Alabama stands in their way. Uh, what do you look at, uh, at as keys to this matchup? With, you know, 
about four weeks to go. Yeah. Well, I think it goes back to what I've been saying to me all along. I think Alabama offensively has got to find a way against this Clemson defense to, to get some balance. Uh, you know, you can't really line up and run it between the tackles against Clemson very well. I think Alabama's got to kind of get on the edges a little bit. And I also think, Gary, that they've got to develop the passing game. There's got to be some consistency there, be able to throw the football. You've got to be able to somehow get this Clemson defense on its heels a little bit. If they can do that, then I think they've got a chance. I think defensively the real key for Alabama is this. All this time off is going to allow those guys, Terrell Lewis, uh, all of the other guys that have been beat up, not played much. Christian Miller would be another one. Mac Wilson would be another one. Deshaun Hand, who is, though he's played the last few games, has not been 100%. Minka Fitzpatrick was probably 70, 75% at the end of the year. So I think getting all of those guys healthy is going to allow Alabama uh, a great opportunity defensively going up against this, this Clemson offense. And you mentioned they don't have Deshaun Watson. Kelly Bryant's a, an outstanding athlete, very fast, very quick, can throw the football, uh, don't have have quite those playmakers outside, but they do have Renfro, the guy who was on the cover of been Sports the Bama killer. Yeah. yeah, the last two years, I mean, he has been a thorn in the side. So, again, I, I look at it preliminary. Uh, you know, some people don't really give Alabama a chance. I know the odds makers have them the early favorite, but uh, I think let's see how Alabama heals up over the course of the next month. I think Alabama fans – would have preferred, I know I would have, to have made it to the SEC championship game and won the SEC title uh, with a victory for four in a row. But now that Alabama got in the playoff without playing in that game, is it a big advantage for Alabama to have even an extra off week on top of all the time they're about to get off? Well, I think it certainly is because they didn't have to play another game. You had all those guys that were injured. You know, you could have risked more injury, I think, clearly. That would be a factor. So having that week off, certainly I think it's a big advantage. And not only for this game, Gary, but just kind of looking at it, something that we don't talk about much. But, you know, the last few years, Alabama has got a late start on that December recruiting period. They got a jump start this year, they? Didn't got they got a jump start, especially with the early signing period coming up. So I think that's a good positive that's thing. That's a great point, Rodney. They got to recruit all last week. Normally they're in Atlanta preparing for the SEC championship game. Well, still to come on Tider Insider Television, what the Ole Miss scandal and the implications may mean for Alabama football. And the Crimson Tide men's basketball team prepares for a matchup against a very fine Rhode Island squad tomorrow night. Here from Coach Avery Johnson when we return. And also coming up later on, we'll be welcoming your phone calls, emails, and tweets. Go ahead and call us and get through at 205-348-WVUA. That's 348-9882. You can email us at the address on your screen, or you can tweet at us using that hashtag TITV. We'll be right back with the only show that takes you inside the Crimson Tide. Tider Insider TV will return right after this break. Welcome back to TITV. Alongside Rodney Orr, I'm Gary Harris. The Alabama men's basketball team got off to a hot start this season, winning its first five games. Then Alabama fell to Minnesota in that game where they played uh, three on five the final ten plus minutes, but only lost 89-84. Things were looking really good. But then on Sunday, kind of an uh, inexplicable loss to UCF, a team that had lost three in a row, 65-62. to Bama fell at home to the Golden Knights. Head coach Avery Johnson is looking ahead to a Wednesday night matchup against Rhode Island and says this team has to do some things to improve on the floor. they got to get better. we just thinking about Rhode Island, you know, trying to be more patient on offense, have better shot selection, limit our careless turnovers, communicate more on defense, rebound on both ends of the floor, um, just play with more consistent intensity on both ends of the floor. All right, Ronnie, this is a young team. Braxton Key's yet to come back, although the good news is it could be really soon, maybe possibly as early as this week, this weekend at Arizona, probably more likely next week against Mercer up in Huntsville. But still, when you get off that fast start like that, I think people get their hopes up. And now you're starting to see um, some flaws against mm -hmm. UCF, um, a team that had not shot the ball well. Alabama gave up three-point baskets. This was not a good three-point shooting team. And offensively, they really struggled to get in a rhythm other than Dante Hall. Colin Sexton had a bad game. John Petty has had a couple of poor games in a row. So uh, they're, they're young. They're learning. But I didn't expect them to go through the season without some bumps. Yep. But maybe early on those first few games, I thought, wow, maybe they'll mm -hmm. just run the table here in the preseason. But, you know, they got some work to growing do, clearly. Pains. Yeah, growing, growing pains. pains. I, don't, I don't think that's any surprise. I mean, when you're playing so many young players, uh, even though they're extremely talented, I think you have to get uh, consistency and continuity there. The guys get acclimated with each other. You go through those things. And 
uh, I, I really don't think that's much of a surprise. I know this. They better be ready to play tomorrow night. Rhode Island's a good basketball team, 5-2, and two, with some veteran players, and they'll come in here ready to win. So that'll be a tough game tomorrow night for the Tide. Well, the fallout from the Ole Miss recruiting scandal continues. Last week, the Rebels were hit with major sanctions, including scholarship restrictions, a year extension on that bowl ban that started this year, and, of course, fines for the school. And the school has chosen to allow some players to transfer to other programs without restrictions. Of course, the seniors can rise and seniors can transfer anyway. Uh, and they may let some of these players even transfer within the SEC. So, Rodney, any chance that some of these Ole Miss players that are better players on that team could wind up here in Tuscaloosa? Well, I think that's a real interesting question. I'm, I'm getting conflicting information. Right. You know, when I, I hear that uh, Greg Sankey, the uh, SEC commissioner, had sent a memo to all the SEC schools that – None of those players would be allowed to transfer within the conference. Okay. Now, again, I don't know if that's even made public, if that's official. That's something that is going around uh, that I heard from a really good source. So, But we'll see what happens. There's been talk. Again, it's it's all speculation. There's been names tossed out there. A.J. Brown, of course, the great receiver. DK, Breland Speaks. Breland Speaks, who's a great defensive lineman. D.K. Metcalf. D.K. Metcalf. Now, those guys are younger players. I, 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 I simply don't know how it's all going to shake out, Gary, because the way the sanctions are, the only ones that are supposed to be able to uh, transfer without any uh, issues are the in terms rising of setting seniors. Up the rising yeah. seniors, exactly. But Ole Miss may release some other guys that want to go. It looks like Patterson, the quarterback, is going to be able to move possibly to Michigan. But we'll keep an eye on that. Remember, Alabama's got a great football team. It's not like they need to poach Ole Miss for players. But if good players are interested in, in transferring, you always take a look at it. And you always I, – I, I'm not sure how it would be handled, but you have an 85 limit. That's so right. So you can't bring in That's players right. if you've got an 85 limit yeah. and you don't have a scholarship available. That's exactly right. may not count against your recruiting class, but it does count against the 85. All right, 10 players were honored by the coaches across the SEC. See who the all-SEC players for the Tide are when we come back. And up next, your phone calls, emails, and tweets. Again, the information right there on your screen. Go ahead and call in now so you can get through. Uh, curious what some of you think about Bama getting into the playoff and what do you think the Tide will do with this opportunity? Your chance to sound off next here on Tider Insider TV. We'll be right back after this timeout. We're used to this. Alabama plays 10 players on the 2017 Coaches All-SEC team released this afternoon. Bama led the way in the conference with those 10 selections, including five first-teamers, marking the 10th consecutive season. The Tide has led the conference in All-SEC picks. Wow. First-teamers included Mika Fitzpatrick, Raekwon Davis, Jonah Williams, Calvin Ridley, and J.K. Scott. Second team included Bradley Bozeman, Deshaun Hand, Ron Payne, Rashawn Evans, and Ronnie Harrison. All right, Rodney, let's head to the phone lines. Our phone line, of course, as always, brought to you by Daniel Moore's New Life Art. Let's go to the New Life Art hotline and welcome in Steve from Northport. Steve, you're first up tonight. How are you? Doing good, buddy. Hey, listen, first thing I want to tell you is that's two beautiful shirts y'all are wearing tonight. Well, and thank I, you. And I got two questions real quick. I'm going to change the channels on you. I heard uh, Penny's ankle was twisted. Is it back good? Yeah, I and think I he. Know you, uh, you covered Braxton Key. Yeah. But how is Nars? Is he back healthy? And the second question I want you to cover is out of all the players that are injured, what players do you and Rodney feel like are going to be back for the Clemson game? Low tide, I'm going to. Yeah, thank you, Stephen. I'll take the basketball, let Rodney handle the football. I think John Petty's going to be good to go tomorrow night. He did tweak that ankle against Minnesota, uh, but he played uh, in the UCF game. I think that um, I think he'll play tomorrow night. Petty, my feeling is it'll be next week before he's back, although they're going to evaluate him. He's practicing. I mean, uh, key, there's a chance you might see him against Arizona, more likely against Mercer. And, yeah, Riley Norris is good to go. He'll be playing tomorrow night. He's been playing. Football-wise, uh, who are they hoping to get back, Rod? Well, I think everyone's going to be come back except for Sean Deion Hamilton, of course, and, and also Miller Forstall, who was hurt earlier in the year. Gary, I don't remember anyone else that would be out for this game, uh, you know, as we look at it at this point. Let me ask you this. I, I've had some people – tell me that they're hearing noise that Sean Dion might be well, able to play. Well, yeah. Jones is another one that yeah. I think Coach Saban said the other day would be out for this game, and there may have been one other. But but I think the injured linebackers in terms of you know, uh, what we saw, Christian Miller, we saw Lewis, Terrell Lewis, we saw Matt Mac Wilson. Wilson. They're going to be good to and, go, and healthy. Mika Fitzpatrick, uh, Ross Pierce Baker, who played against Auburn. So I think all of those guys should be ready to go. Of course, I mentioned that Deshaun Hand should be, be ready to go. So, uh, you know, other than the ones we mentioned, I, I really can't think of anyone else. And I guarantee you, Steve, that uh, Alex Gatewood and the folks at the locker room are glad you like our shirts. Good bye and get you a couple. All right, let's go down to Opelika, down in Auburn country, and talk with uh, Seth. Seth, how are you? 
All right. What you got for us today? Hey, uh, hey I got a couple of comments, and y'all just let me know what y'all think about them. Okay. Uh, uh, I started a uh, Georgia uh, Auburn game, and they were saying that they thought they need to play more physical. I think that's what uh, we need to do: play more physical, because we got our physical in that Auburn game. And uh, the offensive line is giving up a lot of uh, you know plays that are in the backfield that are killing the running game. And that the defense at times, the offensive, I mean the defensive line, they just are not giving up like what three, four yards of pop mm-hmm. and killing them. And and then sometimes I even see where the tackling is getting where it's taking three, four, five right. years to get a hold of these guys. All right, Seth, I let's get on. What you got, yeah, let's get on that because that's a lot. First, as far as getting physical, yeah, Kirby Smart said, you know, we want to be much more physical in the second game. I think Alabama at times against Auburn was out physical. I, I do think that'll be a point of emphasis going into this Clemson game because on both lines of scrimmage, Clemson's good. So you had better be yep. upping your physicality in that game. Uh, Ron, as far as the O-line is concerned, yeah, I think they're capable of playing better uh, at the same time you know Jalen Hurts sometimes especially in the passing game needs to get the ball out of his hands quicker the backs maybe need to hit the hole quicker it's a combination of thing. I, I, things I don't think it's all on the O-line yeah and, and you look at that game and Seth I think you make a lot of really good points I think they do have to have more consistency but they ran the ball 37 times in that game for 209 yards I think that was an average of about 5.6 a carry so they really didn't do a bad job of running the football uh, do they have to get more consistent yes they've had some injuries obviously at the left guard spot. Pierce Baker, then J.C. Eisenhower did a nice job. Then he goes down, yeah. and Pierce Baker comes back in, and he was hobbled. So, uh, you know, I think I think that makes it difficult. But he makes a really good point about yeah. the defensive front yeah. having, and on the running game. They need to be able to start a yeah. point attack. I, I want to remind him, though, too, at all the they lost a lot of players to graduation. Then you've had the injuries. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's going to be a little drop-off, but hopefully they'll toughen up. Uh, great call there, Seth. Let's go to Bluff Park and talk to Rick. Rick, hey, how are you, buddy? Hey, fellas. Appreciate you taking my call. You know, it's almost, it's almost as uh, sweet uh, having the last laugh on Auburn as it is beating. <laughs> hey, uh, I'm, y'all have hit on both my points. Uh, uh, getting the uh, everybody's beat up. Uh, <clears throat> just need to get everybody well. And what I wanted to know, uh, will that improve the push, or it should improve the push on both sides of the ball? Let me hear your comments, folks. Yeah, no, no, no doubt. And now, now keep in mind, too, Alabama didn't play this last week. Those other teams did. But everybody's going to get a nice break. So all four of these teams, for the most part, are going to be the probably the healthiest they've been since early in the season. But for Alabama, yeah, I think the, the strain of that season, the way they had to finish up with LSU, Mississippi State, and Auburn took a lot out of them, I do think they're going to have more push on the offensive line. And I think physically they'll hold the point of attack better. I, on defense, I think they're going to be a little physically stouter than what we saw down the stretch. Yeah, I think so, especially on defense. Now, on the offensive line, I'm telling you, this defensive front for Clemson, uh, you know, Auburn's pretty good. I think Clemson may be even better. Uh, you know, Gary, they can rush the passer. Mm-hmm. They get a lot of pressure on the passer. I think they're the they're best really defense in the country. In the middle. I yeah, do. I do too. You know, what, they have 11 sacks against it's Auburn. Auburn. That it's was early in the year. But they are really good up front defensively. All right, quick email from Perry. Uh, why has the passing game, why does it not have rhythm like we've had in the past? All right, Perry, I'm going to let Rodney handle that one. Uh, I think at times this year it has had rhythm. I I think at times they've, they've been in sync. Uh, clearly, against the better defenses, that's an area that needs to be improved. You mentioned that already. How how do they go back about improving that rhythm against a really good team like Clemson? Well, I mean, uh, you know, it's real tough because you get you get pressure and it makes it difficult. The quarterback has to get the ball out of his hands quicker. I think that's part of it. We've talked about protection. That's been inconsistent at times. And, and you know, then you've had opportunities to make some plays sometimes and the ball's been dropped. So I think it's really all of those things. Uh, I, I don't think they've really kind of established that confidence that they really need in the passing game. But I, as I said before the Auburn game, and I'll say it again in this game, Gary, I think that's a real key is that Alabama's got to be able to establish throwing the football a little bit to kind of back them up, keep them off balance. Some great phone calls and emails so far. we got more to come. Keep those calls coming in. We'll be back with more calls on the New Life Art hotline. There's the number 205-348-9882. More calls, emails, and tweets as we roll along here on a Tuesday night college football playoff edition of Tider Insider TV. We're back after this. Bama's in the playoff for the fourth straight year. People are pumped up about it. So let's get right back to our New Life Art Hotline presented by Daniel Moore. And uh, CB, our pal right here in T-Town, is with us. Hey, CB, what's up, fella? Hey, buddy, how y'all doing? Look, uh, we know Hurt can run the ball, but he can really run it. And uh, uh, we got some great backs. We're going to have to run it or 
pass short pass it to them or something they, they they're too good not to, they need more touches what do y'all think we got to do it to win well cb i think that's a point that a lot of people have wondered gary you know you i think you you've had some questions on your radio show about it the the number of carries uh, i think uh, uh, damian harris had six carries in this last game and uh, you know, there's a lot of talk about that, getting the running ball in the running back's hands more. I think Jalen Hurts has carried it set, uh, 51 times in the last three SEC games. I do think that, that's too that, many. That's quite a bit. Now, not all of those are designed runs. Right. I mean, there's times when he's had to scramble, that's considered a run. And there's when you have the zone reads and the RPOs and all that, sometimes they, they run the football. So, uh, you know, not all of those have been quarterback called runs. Yeah. I'm confident they'll have a good game plan, though, with a month to get ready. I, I really believe that. All right, let's go out to Buell and talk with Bill. Hey, Bill, how are you? All right, you? Very well, sir. I just wonder about uh, Ben Davis. Florida. Does he yeah. have a future at Alabama? Or what's going on? Absolutely, Bill. He actually got to play some down the stretch. He's just, Now, remember, he's just a redshirt freshman. And I think a lot of people are like, well, there's Ben Davis. You know, so much was expected of him. Son of Wayne Davis, great Alabama All-American linebacker uh, from a great program like Gordo. He's going to be fine. Uh, he's still got three years of eligibility after this season. I liked what I saw of him in a little bit of playing time that he had. Big, rangy guy, going to get bigger. I tell you, Rodney, I think he could eventually play with his hand on the ground. He can. I, really I, I think that's probably the goal is to get him bigger and allow him to, you know, line up on the defensive end outside and pass, pass rush. But I tell you what, I promise you this. He's had limited playing time. But this guy has more fans in this yeah. area. I mean, constantly you're asked everywhere you go, what about Ben he's Davis? He's a Bama legacy That's and he's right. a West Alabama kid. We'll be back to wrap it up. Thanks for the call right after this. Well, our beautiful shirts and ties provided as always by the one and only locker room in downtown Tuscaloosa, home of the original elephant wear. Go by and see Alex and Rush and the great staff there. Take your time, browse, let them help fit you and suit you up with original elephant wear or their other great men's lines. Boy, they will have you looking sharp just in time for the holidays. That's the locker room downtown Tuscaloosa. That's going to do it for the program tonight. A reminder, you can catch a replay tonight at 1030 or on our website at wva23.com. For Rodney Orr, I'm Gary Harris. Thanks for watching, everybody. Good night.